So now it's time for the last speaker, a very talented person in media. He can act, he does kung fu, and he can host a TV show. Everything he does, he makes the best out of it. In fact, he is a three-time Australian champion national art artist and Australian representative for kung fu. He has played a number of sun roles in themes that include Tomorrow When the War Began, The Wolverine, and The Huxley Reach, and features as a series regular on the game show Kitchen Weeds and Australian uh, first kung fu TV show, Maximum, uh, Maximum Choppage. And now he's the current host for SBS Pop Asia and working on a leading role for Channel 10's upcoming TV sitcom Street Smart. Everybody, please bring your all attention to Andy Chu. Hi guys, uh, my name's Andy and um, it's an absolute honor to be uh, speaking to you guys today. Is everybody having a good day today? Yeah. Let's try that again. Is everybody having a good day today? Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, I'm Vietnamese, it's a full-time thing, and I'm quite proud of sharing uh, my experience today, and um, I'll tell you a bit about my creative journey. Actually, my mum has decided to join me today. Um, she lives in America, and she's just hanging around, which kind of means I've cut out like 50% of my speech, because half of it was kind of like bagging her out. <laughs> anyway, uh, lucky I wrote that down. All right, so this is a bit about my creative journey. Um, some lessons I've learnt on the way. Uh, a quick show of hands. Who here wants to pursue a, um, a career in the creative area? Hands up if you do. Hands up if you don't. I mean, hands up if you don't know why you're here. <laughs> don't worry, we all get lost sometimes. Alright, well, guys, I'm originally uh, from Canberra. Maybe I'll go to the first slide. That's me. All right, guys, I'm originally from Canberra. I did a uh, Bachelor of Commerce and Asian Studies at the Australian National University. I uh, did Asian Studies, obviously, because I'm Asian. Um, majored in Accounting and International Relations as well. My initial ambition at the time was actually to get a real job and uh, work towards becoming a diplomat or an accountant. But actually, I ended up watching a lot of action movies, which inspired me to basically become a stuntman. Um, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you get kicked out of the house. Um, your parents are like, what are you doing? But eventually I was able to show them why I wanted to do it. So that's pretty much how I got started. It was like Jackie Chan movies, and that inspired me to start training martial arts and competing. So in 2005, I started competing, and uh, I went on to win three Australian championships, which is kind of cool. And uh, from that I got scouted to work with some creators and um, some artists from Cirque du Soleil. Has anyone heard of Cirque, Cirque du Soleil? So uh, yeah, so I special, specialized in fire choreography, wire work, and a few other things. And uh, here's a quick video of some of the stuff I did. So this was the initial gig, the first job I got. So this is the video I was trying to show you. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> okay, so yeah, you kind of get the point. Just lots of kung fu stuff hitting each other. That's pretty much it. Okay, so basically, I found that the key to pursuing a creative career back then was actually Facebook. Uh, I got the opportunity to work on Wolverine, which is that poster on the side there with Hugh Jackman. And that was a really great opportunity. And it was a, it was a chance to work with some really high level people. And I was totally amazed to be on that set. So I took that opportunity to talk to everyone I could, including like the cleaners, the producers, the extras, anyone. And uh, I just asked them if I could add them on Facebook. I just asked everybody. It was kind of like my little souvenir because I didn't think I'd get back on one of those productions. So I added everyone on Facebook. Um, so a few months later, I started to get a few acting roles and I was just playing like really Asian stereotypes. Like I was playing like the Asian gangster. I was playing like an Asian doctor, like a drowning Asian on a beach. Um, I play a really good drowning Asian. <laughs> anyway, um, I was like, I was even a, like a token Asian guy on Home and Away. I was like photographer too. Um, but all on these productions, I went around and I just added everyone on Facebook. It was kind of like my little souvenir, like I'd made a few friends. So FYI, the limit for Facebook friends is actually 5,000, if you're wondering. And I hit that number pretty quickly. <laughs> So anyway, not long after, I was able to get an agent and my agent gave me a call and was like, hey, there's a new TV show that they were creating. It was called, uh, it was for Channel 9, it was, called, it was called Kitchen Whiz. And it was kind of like at the peak of those cooking shows. MasterChef was super popular. And um, I was super keen to do it, but I'd heard that like every Asian person was going for this role. But to my surprise, when I walked into the audition room, a guy that I'd added on Facebook was the producer. So um, he gave me the job. And this is pretty much what I do on Kitchen Wiz. So that's Kitchen Whiz. So the show ended up going for five years, uh, 475 episodes, seven seasons, and it made me a millionaire. No, I'm just kidding, it didn't make me a millionaire. I'm joking, Mum. Mum, can you still buy me lunch? Okay. Now, t I found that it was quite random to be a Vietnamese person playing a Japanese ninja on, a, on an Australian TV show. Um, but it happened. So the Kitchen Ninja character actually became quite iconic amongst kids and mums. Uh, and the show got sold internationally to 13 countries. Anyway, that opened a lot of doors for me and I eventually sourced an opportunity at SBS um, and to become a host of this show called SBS Pop Asia. Now, it is Australia's number one TV show for Asian pop culture. And pretty much my job is to interview the biggest Asian pop stars in the world. It's kind of a cool job. And this is uh, a bit about SBS, SBS Pop Asia. BTS! <laughs> 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 Steve Aoki! They're happy. They're happy. That's the only advice. Newlywed. 
So that's uh, my, it's my sixth year at SBS now, um, and I'm still the main host, and I'm, I also produce as well. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to help the brand grow to 1.3 million followers on Facebook, and we just hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, we're also a TV show, Radio Inflight Qantas, and we're on, online. And uh, I, I guess the highlight was meeting BTS. I had no idea that they'll blow up. And uh, I'm at a point at Jimin's cacao. Not anymore. Uh, but um, I've had the opportunity also to push a lot of Vietnamese artists, and that's been really good. We've, we had Son Dung NTP on the show two years ago. And very soon, um, Sue Boy is coming on, if anyone knows an artist called Sue Boy. Sue Boy is going to be hanging out. Um, but these are my five key takeaways from my silly journey. Number one, your work ethic really can separate you from the pack. I still work close to 10 to 12 hours a day, close to six to seven days a week, and that's the price you pay to stay relevant. Um, I sometimes pretty much have no life, no wife, sorry mum. But that's it, that is the price you have to pay sometimes. Number two, uh, you definitely have to create your own opportunities. TV networks and media companies uh, generally have a lot of rules and red tape and it's generally extremely difficult to achieve more. So I would say always put your money where your mouth is and uh, invest in your own opportunities, whether that is education, buying equipment or paying for a segment yourself. And once you do that, others will follow. Number three, sometimes you don't get noticed or taken seriously when you're say asian in the media and you just have to be adaptive and uh, be persistent number four the hustle and the struggle it never ends and uh, basically you can quit or obviously you can keep going so doing doing your best to be comfortable with being uncomfortable i'm sure it's something you guys have heard before and uh, number five, probably the biggest lesson I learned was the importance of self-care. Um, explore ways to keep you calm, whether that's like meditation or like yoga, salsa, I started doing salsa, functional training or whatever it is to keep you centered and that's a really important part in pursuing a creative career. So there's no set path in pursuing a creative career. Everyone's journey is definitely different. Your journey won't be the same as mine. Uh, but there are elements that you can control, which is obviously your will, your work, your work ethic, and that's going to ultimately determine how well you do. And um, if people don't give you an opportunity, you can always just add them on Facebook. Um, <laughs> but these days, I don't add people on Facebook, I add people on Instagram, and that is me. Let's connect. Anyway, that's pretty much uh, all I have. Um, thanks for listening.